Welcome back to BMAC Vags. In this video, we're going to be doing an instrument cluster repair. As you can see, these have a fault with the LCD screens and temperature gauges. We're going to fix that now. So the first thing we have to do is to remove the dash cluster itself. And that's pretty easy. I've got a video, the link in the description will show you exactly how to remove this properly. So click on the link in the description and you'll see that part down there. There it is, all removed, ready to go. Now you're gonna need a Torx 10 screwdriver. Um, yeah, you should be able to get that virtually anywhere. Once again, I'll leave another link for that. And it's just about removing the screws around the edge of the cluster itself, the clock itself. They're really, really simple, easy screws, just self tappers. Just take them out slowly, put them away. There you go. So now once they're removed, it's just a matter of undoing these little clips on the side. They're just locator clips. Just undo them, just lift them up with a flat screwdriver. Don't lift it up too hard. It'll pop off really easy. So just take your time once again. We're dealing with this dashboard cluster and it has your immobilizer in it. So you don't want to damage anything in or around there. So just be careful and just uh, be considerate when removing it. Now we're into the clocks themselves. It's just about breaking it down. Now you could just push these from behind where the plugs go in you can just push in from behind and this will just ease up and allow the whole clock to come out just put that away nicely nice and safe I chose to rest it on a bit of memory foam and remove the needles they just pull up sometimes they're easy sometimes they're not but you can just turn these anti-clockwise and lift them up they're pretty easy to be honest they're not too bad now for the temperature and the fuel gauges these were a little harder so I had to kind of try and find a way to lift them up without doing any damage. You can't just spin these back because they'll break. So what I used was a bit of sellotape on a ruler. You can see that because I just didn't want no marks on the fascia of the clocks themselves. So I just put a bit of sellotape on it and laid it down on the surface. And I just used what I had in my home and um, tried to lift it up with a fork. So. If you can just slip underneath there, underneath the fork as well, and just make sure you're lifting up as much as possible. You see that one come off really, really easy. I don't know how I was gonna get it off otherwise. So this one was a little bit harder for some reason. I, I don't know why, but it was a little bit more tricky. So what I did was I got a slightly thicker ruler <laughs> and just used that as leverage to lift up and that's how I popped them off. Nice, easy. So now it's just this this fascia with the, the speedos, the, the decal. They just clip around the center circles. So just be careful, just clip them off. Make sure not to pull because you don't want to tear it and you want it to sit back nice. So now it's just about turning it around on the back. We've got some metal clips on the bottom. They, um, they hold in the printed circuit board. And if you could just see at the bottom there and in the center of the screen, those two, they're also connectors and they, yeah, they, they, they hold it in and they're connectors. So we've got to just release them so it will free up the printed circuit board so we can separate it because we're going to need to separate it so we can take out this LCD screen. So this is what you have to do. If you were just replacing the fuel and the temperature gauges, then you won't need to remove these. You can actually just pop them out from there. But otherwise, if you're gonna be doing the LCD screen, which is a really common fault on these, you're probably gonna to have to uh, remove these as well. You're gonna to have to separate the board totally so we can get access to it. So now moving on to the stepper motors, the motor that do the temperature gauge and the fuel gauge. Now I find these quite difficult to take off. Now the most important thing is to be very careful of the white thing that it sits on. You don't want to break those. But I ended up just breaking the clips on the actual stepper motor itself because I found that easier to deal with. These were really brittle inside and I just made a decision that since I was in here, I was just going to replace the whole two units, not just one, because I didn't want to have to come back in here later on so for me i found it easiest just to replace both stepper motors all at once so i don't have to go in there 
but I found these particularly brittle and really really difficult to get off without breaking it and you really have to be careful here because if you slip off of what you're trying the, the little uh, cream clamps on the side of them you end up going into the circuit board and you don't want to be damaging anything like that the traces or anything like that so in the end I just broke these off I think it would have been easier if I just used a soldering iron and just burnt off the actual plastic clamp themselves but the most important thing is is that you don't want to break the white post that they sit on I was just here trying a few different options but it really really wasn't working for me so I just ended up breaking them off and starting again putting two brand new stepper motors at least that way I know they'd be good for at least another seven eight nine ten years now on to the RPM needle and the miles per hour needle now these are a lot easier they didn't feel so brittle and it's just about getting a screwdriver a wide head screwdriver and splitting them apart and then it will just lift off those white posts once again all of these items are available on my website www.bmacbags.com you'll be able to buy all the parts that you're seeing in this repair tutorial but once again like i said this is really easy um, you just have to split it up be a bit patient and um, it will pop off really easily there you go you just a little bit of elbow grease and like I said I was really worried about breaking them white posts so I just really took my time but it wasn't difficult at all this was quite easy to be fair so we're just replacing those same on the other side wider the screwdriver the better it's going to be and the easier it's going to be to remove but we're just breaking it down slowly slowly making sure that we aren't leaning on the painted circuit board too much because we, like i said before we don't want to damage any traces the immobilizers there we don't want to short anything so um yeah just just take your time and remove it try not to break anything be very careful with it you know because it is a 15 16 year old item so this is what we're doing so you can just see me just pressing on them tabs make sure they're cl make giving clearance and then after that what you'll see is you'll just be able to slide it apart it'll just come apart there we go take your time once again yes it's coming off i use this little memory foam pad it just helped me out it just made me feel that like it's not on a hard surface and i'm not breaking anything so here's the lcd screen from my website link in the description and um, what I did was just had a look at it and made sure that it was all the same that I'm replacing like for like they don't look the same but they are the same and they work perfectly so I just lined it up make sure it had the right amount of pins as you can see it's all there so I personally wasn't really confident in soldering these little items so I took it into my local phone repair shop where they handled repairs and they did these sort of things and they were used to soldering really intricate items so I took it in there got it soldered paid a small little fee it wasn't really too much at all and um, yeah got it done and he was responsible for the soldering which was good so all I had to do was put it all back together with my stepper motors and everything else now like it's just a return it's just a reverse of removal really you just got to make sure they all line up in the spaces that they came out of and just push them in you'll hear a little locating click as they go in and and it's really 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 simple stuff but the most technical part was for me was the soldering and I didn't want to go through the whole soldering process so these are the new stepper motors here this is what you get when you order them from my website and they just slide in you just take your time make sure everything's lined up and then just you know just lean on them to slide in don't push too hard on anything be gentle but be firm you will hear a distinctive click as it goes in so there you go you'll see it just locate and you know you'll be all right so like I said, I changed both of them because I didn't want to come back in here. The RPM and the mile per hour motors were fine. They were showing no signs of um, fault or anything like that. So yep, it's just a reversal of putting, taking it off and um, putting it back into the car. 
like I said, just check that everything's in the right places they're meant to be in and it's all looking right because it's gonna sit in your car. I mean, I'm gonna show you later what I did. And I've just cleaned the screen just in case I've got any fingerprints with a microfiber cloth. So now putting the needles on is pretty easy. You just line them up with the zero and whack them on. Push them in and the temperature gauge. Now you can't do the petrol gauge like this because it works a little bit differently. You have to put that in the car and turn it on for roughly four or five seconds and allow the needles to recalibrate. It's different for the cold because the cold always starts from the cold, but the fuel gauges don't start from zero. They start from wherever you left it. So it's best to either have it really empty or really full or at least take a picture of where they were located before you removed it and then put it back in that position. So it's, it should either be empty or full and then you put it in one of those positions because you know they're finite pos positions. You don't want to just try and guess it because it won't work. So you can see it's going where it needs to go and um, everything seems to be functioning as it should. So now I've got confirmation that everything's all right. I'm just putting it back together. Now, what you're gonna see a little bit later on is that I actually knocked the mile per hour gauges. That's how easy it is just to unsettle these. And it's gone a bit down and I've had to reset it later on. But it's my mistake that you don't have to fall for. But then it's just a matter of putting it all back together and um, yeah, driving your car. So here are the results. Like I said before, that mile per hour just a little bit lower than it should be. But yeah, that's it. Don't forget to comment and hit that like button. And like I said before, everything's available at www.bmacvags. Thank you for watching.